more and more Midjourney creators are getting access to the Midjourney website. In this video, I'll show you why you'll be leaving Discord behind and moving your image creation into Midjourney's website. At the time of filming, you can access Midjourney's website if you've made more than a thousand images on Discord. You can check your image count by going to Discord and typing slash info in the message bar. If you have over a thousand images, open the website and follow along as we tour this incredible tool. The tool was a bit shaky when it first came out, but the Midjourney team has been hard at work adding features to the website, and it's now ready for prime time. Let me show you all that you can do. Open the Midjourney website and you'll see all of the images you've created on Midjourney or Niji Journey. The most obvious change is the absence of grids. Images are laid out in a row, sometimes pushing into two rows if you use a wide aspect ratio. Each image is already upscaled. There's no need to pull images out of the grid. The prompt, parameters, and other tools are to the right of the images. Notice that the parameters are formatted like buttons. Go ahead, click one. They're live. Clicking parameters quickly adds them to the prompt box. This formatting takes a bit of getting used to. Use the like button to flag your favorite images. There's no way to delete images on the website as yet, but you can hide images or sets of images from your gallery. But this isn't the headliner. You have a live prompt bar. Enter what you want to see. No need to type slash imagine anymore. Just start prompting. With the plus sign, you can add images to your prompt with a single drag and drop. No more image links. The website keeps your images in a catalog for future use. You can use these images as either image prompts or style references. And if you haven't played with SREF yet, you're in for a treat. I have an entire video on the SREF parameter. There's also a nifty new describe tool hidden amongst the images. Click on the eye icon for an image and start selecting subjects, styles, and descriptions. Your choices are automatically added to a prompt. If you found any hidden gems on the website, let us know in the comments below. Open the settings icon to set the parameters you like. This is similar to the slash settings command in Discord, or the slash prefer suffix. Move the slider to change the aspect ratio. I love the handy little visuals that show you the shape of your image. Use the sliders to set your preferred stylization, weirdness, and variety, formerly called chaos. Toggle style raw on and off and choose your favorite mid-journey or Niji version. You can also set relaxed, fast, or turbo mode and turn on stealth if you've got this in your subscription. You can still use all the other parameters by typing them directly into your prompt with the dash dash command. You've got a ton of handy tools at your fingertips. Hover over images and quickly make subtle or strong variations. You can also quickly rerun the prompt. Click the Use button to move the prompt into the prompt box where you can quickly change it and hide images if you don't like the result. Then you have even more options, like copying the prompt or seed, or downloading the image. Now click on an image and you have even more tools to work with. The prompt, parameter, and tools are on the right side. Let's start at the bottom. 
click the Use Prompt button to move the prompt into the prompt bar for easy editing. You can also quickly use this image as an image prompt or a style reference prompt. One thing to note, clicking a button sends a prompt to mid-journey, and it is working on your images. But with this one image open, you can't see the generation at work. Notice the Create tab on the left-hand column shows when mid-journey is working on one of your images. And you will get a small indication next to the button. Click the X in the upper right-hand corner to return to the full image creation page. I really like the red tags on the image that clearly tell you if the image is an upscale, a variation, a pan, or that sort of thing. It helps keep me organized. On the website, you have pretty much all the tools that you have in Discord. You can rerun the prompt with one click, or open the very region editing space to change elements in your image. It works pretty much like it does in Discord. The zoom buttons are here alongside a handy Change Aspect Ratio button. Just like in Discord, you can pan left, pan right, up or down. You have two levels of Remix now. Remix moves the text prompt into the prompt bar, but also uses the image as an image prompt. In version 6, you have subtle and creative upscale options. These double the size of your image. The 4x upscaler has not been released for version 6 yet, and it isn't included on the website. Don't forget to click the heart emoji to like the images. It makes them much easier to find later during searches. If you upscale in Discord to identify your favorite images, try instead using the heart emoji. And you can explore other images like this one by clicking the magnifying glass. This is a great way to find other creators with your aesthetic and explore other ways to prompt this sort of image. It's like having a personal explore page. The search bar is super handy for finding older images, but there is a more advanced search option under the Archive tab in the left-hand column. Click Archive, and your view changes. Midjourney shows you images by date. Click the plus icon to quickly select all images in the date, or hold the Shift key and select individual images. Now you can download the selected images, or click more for other options. For instance, you can bulk, like, hide, or add these images to a folder. Speaking of folders, you have these here too. If you have a thousand or more images, you may want to start organizing them. You can easily create a folder and drag images into the folder. Filter is a more refined search option. It's easy to search by liked images or upscales. You can even search by aspect ratio, version, style raw, or tile. If you've hidden an image and changed your mind, check the box next to hidden and find the image that you want to unhide. In the drop down menu, select unhide image. And if you want to change the default look of the archive page, click the View Options. I'm showing square image thumbnails, but you might want to see the full image, and maybe you like them larger or smaller. Over on the left-hand column, you can easily access the Explore page, or even jump into Discord to report a bug. This tab is also the quickest way to get into Midjourney's Discord for prompt help or to just chat with folks. You can get billing help or jump to Midjourney's documentation page for help. On the Explore page, click on an image, and you can quickly use the text prompt or use the image as an image prompt or a style reference. 
When you run the prompt, notice the Create tab is activated. You're running a prompt in the background. Click out of this image and move to the Create page to see the results of the generation. On the Explore page, you can easily like images and even click the creator's name to see more images. Hopefully soon, we will be able to follow our favorite creators. Your likes are cataloged under the Like tab so you can find them again easily. And don't skip the Rate Images tab. Picking between pairs of images is a great way to help Majority get better. And the top raters get a free fast hour. That's a win-win for everybody. If you've made over a thousand images, it's time to leave the clunky Discord behind and start creating on Midjourney's website. The team is still tweaking the website, but it's stabilized now and running pretty smoothly. Midjourney's moving into a new era, so get ready for the future. Leave a comment below with your favorite features on the website and what you miss from Discord. If this video was helpful, like the video and subscribe to the channel for more AI art tips and tricks. This is Janet making AI magic. Let's create something amazing together.